So we're back here on lesson five and we're gonna build on our straight right hand skills or cross jab skills. Remember it is a straight punch, it's not a hooking punch. So we want a nice technical clean straight cross. I purposely separated movement from just moving uh, that cross over the cone and creating that distance. Now we're gonna add movement. So one of the things that I want my mid holder and my strikers to learn is not to throw until they see the target. So now I'm slowly building target recognition skills, which is gonna benefit their mid holding um, capabilities in the long run and strikers are gonna get a much more realistic sense of how combinations come out. The difference now is that she won't throw the right hand until I feed it to her, but we can be moving in a circle around the cone at any given time. The previous drill already kind of gave me a sense of where I need to set the pad up so that she's not hyperextending or I'm not jamming on her straight right. So the drill would look like this, and I would do this as a timed interval and not a counted drill. So as you can see, as a mid holder, I'm also practicing my footwork. You are gonna get beginners moving like this. So Susan, try not to hurt your elbow, um, cause I'm gonna be doing it wrong. And that's okay. Sometimes people can only concentrate on one thing at a time. The feeding of the mitt is what they're focused on and the footwork just doesn't come natural to them. And over time, just giving them consistent cues of saying, hey mitt holder, don't square off the pad. Remember, you've got a mirror and match your partner across that cone. So that way when you're moving, you're moving in your fighting stance too, as opposed to letting them shuffle around the cone, more like a um, kind of gym class drill. So give that a try. The cones are such great tools to use, and you're still consistently teaching a technique of feeding the mitts to a brand new student. Okay, in lesson six now, we're gonna put it together. I'm gonna to use the cone, I'm gonna use the jab, I'm gonna use the cross. Hopefully my students that are brand new are starting to get the concept of how to properly place the mitts. So the trick now is for them to learn how to create the timing of placing the one and then the two right after one another. It's not the end of the world if they are starting out more like that. I don't have a problem with that. But at least what they haven't started to do is this. Because they haven't even seen that as an option. So the goal is to eliminate that bad behavior by not even letting it be part of your training class at all. And then they won't know that that's a default for bad technique, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna use the cone once again because it tells me as a mid holder, I want my pads on this side and I want her body to stay on this side. And my big cue as my students get more advanced is their head should not come past this cone. Their body might extend a little bit because my shoulder technically is coming forward, but it tells me as a striker that my head needs to be on my side of the cone, which then starts to also create a much better sense of control over their center of gravity. So now I go one, two, one, two, jab, cross. So like the lead jab and the isolation of the cross, I might start this out as a counted drill I count one, they go one, two. I emphasize the feet and the placement at head height. And then I let it roll into two minutes, okay? So it would look like this. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you can go right into a build. So from here, we can progress this and create the movement. So now we move, and then I feed. Basically integrating footwork in, so that would be your progression that you could tell your more advanced students to do. The newcomers, you can just keep them in place and a position where they stay at the six o'clock and 12 o'clock position on uh, their cone with your partner.